could something go right for once. Damn it. Stone popped off. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Guys, it's summertime. It's officially barbecue season. Let's take this project outdoors. And what's even better, I got a brand new grill. This is a brand new Traeger Timberline XL. Boy, this thing is like a sports car. I'll show you more about the bells and whistles later on. I'm on a mission to build an outdoor kitchen here. Now, I've done a pellet grill outdoor kitchen before, and the problem is, is I had to leave of the last house because it was built in. Not making this mistake again. I'm not leaving this thing with a new owner. Let's see what we can figure out. So the idea here is to have the kitchen built-in part on the outsides. Now, they're gonna be completely movable. In fact, they're gonna have their own little legs that they can kind of adjust height to whatever you want. Now, what each of these cabinets is gonna contain, that's the part I'm really excited about. So the first cabinet is gonna be a sink. Now, the only problem there is I don't have plumbing for the faucet and this thing needs to be movable, so we'll have to figure that part out. Now, for the second cabinet, instead of having a cooler, I'm gonna have a mini fridge. Now there's two more things that's very important to me. I need countertop space, that's where this comes in. And the second thing is I need a space for a sear box and that's gonna go conveniently on top of it. The budget for this project is gonna be probably because we have to buy the fridge and we have to buy the sinks and the faucet and granite countertops. I think we could do it for about under a thousand or at about a thousand. So far I have pressure treated lumber we have to consider to make it outdoor friendly so it's not rotting and the screws. I'm about 140 bucks deep right now. This is basically Stonehenge. The most sophisticated build I've ever made, right here, perfect. Shoot, that's supposed to be a little bit longer like that. That looks more like it. The invention of the pocket hole jig has to be one of the greatest inventions in woodworking. It was actually my very first tools that I started woodworking or building anything was a pocket hole jig, not this one, but a pocket hole jig, and a drill and impact driver. Those are, it just, and look at me now. I'm working with pressure treated lumber. Who needs a hammer or a mallet? We got pressure treated lumber, baby. This, the frame of this cabinet is done. Let's start moving on to the sink one. Okay, we have our second cabinet done. I actually did a little more planning. Had to use a lot less wood, which is nice. I don't want to use too much of it. I decided to also keep the same layout here. Nice big opening. Reason why is the sink's going to be on top. I decided to solve the problem for plumbing to have one of those pump actuated stuff. So I'll need the cabinet doors to open and the foot pedal on the ground. It worked basically building a house. This is, you know, the studs. Then we have the exterior OSB. Oh, by the way, four sheets of OSB. I just spent about a hundred bucks. So take that off the budget. Uh, we're going to start cutting this up and wrapping both the insides and outsides. <sighs> this thing is dense. Start wrapping it with OSB. What does OSB stand for? Oriented Strand Board. It tells me absolutely nothing. Maybe it's because it's made out of strands. What a weird name. Bridge cabin's done. Onward to the sink one. I should have planned for this project in the spring. It's like 90 degrees out. I'm sweating like a pig. <sighs> Comment in the section. I want to know where you guys are. Is it hotter? Am I being obnoxious? Guys, I'm done being cooked for the day. Uh, tomorrow's gonna cool down, at least in the morning, and I'm gonna start wrapping this with uh, sheeting so we'll keep it weatherproofed. All right, guys, we're wrapping a bunch of stuff today. This is roofing underlayment, felt underlayment. Uh, you guessed it, it goes right on your roof. We're gonna wrap this puppy. The fun thing is I kept this from two years ago when I built my first grill station and uh, it was 28 bucks. So if you buy it, it's 28 bucks. I saved this from the last one, so I just saved money on a project, $28. Looking good. I'm gonna start wrapping this around and stapling it, covering as much as I can before we start putting the galvanized mesh wire on it. As you can see, I temporarily made my little uh, pegs for this, just to see what it looks like. I'm gonna order actually the adjustable one so water can get underneath it and, you know, a dolly when I need to move it.
Galvanized steel lath, boys and girls. This is a honeycomb mesh. And so the paper's there to make sure the mortar moisture doesn't compromise the wood. And then the lath right here is meant to have the mortar stick onto something quite well so the stone doesn't fall off. Uh, one thing to note, the honeycomb shape points up and down. You want it to be flipped, which way? Just like that. You want it to be sitting like that where this little honeycomb is sitting slanted up so the mortar can actually sit on it and not slope off. I'm securing it using my roofing nails. They're galvanized as well. You wanna punch this sucker in about every six inches uh, vertically up and down and then every 12 inches across a nice tight spread. And trust me, get it tight or else you're gonna have a miserable time putting the first scorch coat of mortar on. And I've done that before. It sucked, really did suck. There has to be an easier way to do this. I, I think we're just gonna roll this thing as a box. This also helps by stretching it too. Oh, jeez. My hat's so soaked in sweat. Good thing I have felt paper down. I don't even know why I'm wearing this glove with the fingers out of it. She is wrapped and ready. Oh, by the way, between the galvanized lath, the nails, and the mortar, spent about 50 bucks. The mortar is called an S-type mortar. I don't know what the S-type means, but that's what masonry guys are you supposed to use for this kind of stone veneer. Trying to get this thing to the consistency of about peanut butter. I'm not saying sour cream because people are like, that's such a Slavic thing of you to say. Yeah, that's the way I was taught. Peanut butter, sour cream, or ketchup, whatever you want to call it, just don't eat it. This next part is the easy part. All you're gonna do is gonna try to fill all of these little honeycombs. It's actually a lot easier to apply now that I'm realizing this, top down because those honeycombs are facing down or facing up if we did it right. Now that our scratch coat is on, we're gonna start doing the score coat. And what that is, is we're actually gonna use a trowel, half inch trowel, and we're gonna start making these horizontal passes. Why? Well, once they dry, when the tile, or not this tile, the stone goes on, it actually has a leverage point so it doesn't slide off. The nice part is it's added strength. The bad part is we're gonna have to let it cure for about 24, 36, 48 hours, or just 48 hours. Why am I, I don't know. Working in this whole summer heat, 90 degree weather, find a final solution. Get your dad a hot dad summer tank top. Like a description, you'll like it. You won't have a heat stroke. Of course, it's the last side that I finally figured out a technique how to make it nice. <laughs> I come alive in the fourth quarter. What I'm doing here is caking on a good amount, making sure this is mixed on a little bit wetter side, especially the weather conditions. And then once it's caked on, and it has the base coat on there, then you can use your trowel to move it and you get a nice little crate like that. Fourth quarter, baby, that's what I'm for. Let's let it cure. Let the water moisture evaporate. We'll come back in about two days to start stoning. We'll get stoned, do the stone, stoning, all of it. So since this is gonna be where the sink will be, I'm gonna build a face frame. What I'm gonna do is put this piece and secure it in place, connecting this together, and then build a inch and a half face frame completely around using pocket holes. So I'm going with a, an oak, cause it's easy to get, attach them together with pocket holes, and then I'll put pocket holes on the insides of it so I could secure it through the side. Dang, if that's not a perfect fit. Oops, <laughs> don't know my own strength. Now I'm gonna only temporarily secure it with these pocket screws on the sides. When I'm done building the door, then I'll take the face frame and the doors off and I'm gonna uh, marine varnish them. The mortar's cured. Today's an official day that we can start laying the stone. This stone I bought from my local shop, stone shop, so roughly around 50 something square feet. Paid about 580 bucks for the stone. And the strategy is to do the outside corners first and then move it inside. And let me show you how to apply it. So here's a quick little how-to to do this. You got a little spray bottle, spray the back, 
hydrate it to allow the mortar to actually not steal all the moisture right away and have good contact. Throw your S mortar on top. You wanna to create about an inch, inch and a half, two inches of thickness. And then you're gonna use your trowel or whatever you're using and create those little channels. Push it in. Now you wanna do your corners first just to make sure it doesn't abrupt your patterns and then fill the rest in. And you definitely wanna stagger them so the eye doesn't recognize consistent patterns. I don't want this to be the general theme of this video, but today's not a cold day at all. So the people that do this on a regular basis, they have a wet stone saw, same kind of blade, but it's running with water on it. Uh, I don't have one, I don't typically need one because I don't do stone work that often. So what's getting me by perfectly is uh, Ryobi One Plus Angle Grinder. This is a masonry blade on there. I'm really regretting kicking myself for not making this section thicker because this is, uh, having this stay on, it's gonna be fun to see the leaf. All right, one last finishing piece. Bittersweet moment. Who are we kidding? No, it's not. It's a sweet, sweet moment. All right, there she is, folks. We stoned this thing to death. Okay, the doors. Uh, I just spent another $100 on the doors for the oak. I'm starting to worry if I'm actually going to make this budget. Uh, if you stick around to the end, we'll whip out all the receipts and break everything down to see where we could have saved money and what this thing actually ended up costing. Here's my door layout. We're going to use a router bit system. Let's throw this on the router and start zipping these away. Now we're gonna switch out for the tongue part. Here's our tongue and groove styles and rails, by the way. Rail, style, anatomy and physiology of woodworking. Now we got our center panels. We're gonna create a groove completely around it. I think I have a bit for this, like a raised panel bit. Look at this behemoth. I'm always terrified to use it. Do gradual passes, don't try to take a whole chunk. All right, let's see how it fits. The only reason I don't like that style of creating these panels is uh, you got to make all these micro adjustments before you get to the perfect thickness, but I think we're there. Might need like a hair, like one more hair taken off. Perfection. Let's start putting this puppy together. All I'm gonna do is glue up the end grain, and that is it. The center panel does not get glued up just because it's floating, expansion, contraction, you gotta let it do its thing, science. All right, we got doors, baby! We're gonna let them dry overnight and then start sanding them and rounding them over. Let's go see how the stone turned out. And uh, in hindsight, I need to put some pegs underneath it, but they never showed up in time. And they're finally here, so I'm gonna have to install them the most difficult of the ways. Let's go. So I'm using these little levelers I got on Amazon. Uh, the idea is you drill a hole 3 8, uh, slam this thing in so these uh, spikes bite into it and then screw this in and you can adjust it how high you want. Look at that, I already bent this one. Always buy extras. Nothing broke. Let's see if we can repeat this. I'm so confident now that the stone is not popping off anytime soon. If it could tolerate being laid on its back, I'm pretty sure it's gonna tolerate standing. Oh, that looks so nice. I don't like how this face frame is inside and the stone's protruding. So, I was actually thinking about this the other day. I think my solution is gonna be remove this face frame, remove this piece, and then move this piece out and then put more pressure treated two by fours on top so that the face frame maybe starts three quarters along the way of the rock and then the doors will cover it. And that'll conceal the side, it's not side grain of the rock, but it's the side cut of the rock. You know, in hindsight, it'd probably been a smarter idea if I was to have these ready made and then that way the stone could butt up against it. But I'm more of an afterthought kind of guy.
door hinges, nothing fancy, only thing you do need to know, and this is when you're gonna even build your doors, how much overlay you're gonna have. Varies, inch and a quarter, wild stuff. I will need a little jig to space them out, mark my holes, and start drilling. So all in the details, these little bumpers to make sure they don't whack every time you close. Oh, baby, baby, look how good does that look? We gotta do frame around here for the mini fridge. Boys and girls, it's time for the mini fridge. Let's see if it fits. Doesn't fit. Dang. Because this cabinet has a brace down below, the front of this one doesn't, so it's in like a quarter of an inch to maybe a little bit over that. So by putting a two before down below, I'm gonna spread them open. Spread it. Ugh. There you go. Because everything lines up perfectly, I think I'm comfortable taking the doors off, taping off the edges, and start staining. Originally, I wasn't gonna stain it. But then I realized how dark the stone is and how dark the cabinet or the grill is. It only makes sense to kind of go with the theme of darker stuff. So pop them off, start staining. We're gonna use ebony on it, uh, give it that darker charcoal color. Probably shouldn't have loaded up the fridge with beers already. Ah, uh, damn. It all just dumped out. By the way, this is spar urethane. I was gonna introduce it. <laughs> a spar urethane, you can use it indoor or outdoor. It's UV protection, rain, moisture, sunlight. Let's see how far this thing will take us. There's not much here, look at this. You want a little hack, take some uh, scrap plywood, cut in a 45 degree angle, and now you have little pyramid triangles that you can use them as a drying rack. Folks, let's figure out this uh, plumbing situation. We don't have direct water coming in, so we're gonna have to improvise to make this kind of like an RV style thing. We have our faucet that we got on Amazon. It's got a three inch, three eighth inch connection. That's the hard part to figure out because all these adapters don't work together. Solution I'm going with is a classic traditional foot pump that you'll see like at a porta potty to wash your hands. Half inch clear hose, couple of fittings. This will be to tap into the bucket below to feed the water into the pump and then this one will go to tap into the bucket to drain the soiled water. By the way, one fresh, one soiled water. This thing's weird, because like the threadings are like reversed, so not used to this way of life. Now by having that, we don't have to take the bucket out when we want to drain the soiled water. Here's where it gets tricky, because this is a 3 8 compression connection, uh, a traditional connection with a PEX doesn't work. The solution I have is using a shark bite, which you slide on like PEC, but it has a better connection. So hopefully it won't start leaking on us. Now, let's see if she runs. That's exactly what you want it to do. This thing works. This might be actually a good, like a camping thing too, if you want to just make it and throw in the car and have potable water. Or you can just buy one of those jugs that already has a little, but yeah, don't do that. This is just for this. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna have to get you one of those like ponchos they have at SeaWorld. Got a hole here. This will be our, for the sink drain. And it'll be, you can manipulate it if we need to move a little aside or not. Sink drains here, fresh water there. When we need to get rid of the soiled water, open this little spigot. It all drains out. I don't know how we did it, but uh, we decided to put the countertops in the back seat, standing up. I don't know if I broke them as I was driving, but we'll find out right now. So it looks like I need to take down just a little bit to keep it from wobbling. I don't want any stress fractures or anything like that. So if you followed this channel for any time at all, you know that it's not a Mr. Builder project unless things go wrong. So when I measured for the cooktop and the sink, I didn't account for the two by four that's gonna be in front of it. I'm gonna have to move this away and cut into it to be able to slide the undermount sink there. And then I'm gonna have to cut this part out in order to drop the sear box on top. Great. Stone popped off. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Could something go right for once. 
Yeah. By the way, I bought the sink, Amazon, 150 bucks. That's more like it. So let's install the faucet first and then attach the sink. So I'm cleaning up just the top with acetone of the sink. That's where we're gonna use 100% silicone, put a bead on it, lift it up, clamp it in, and let it dry overnight. Now, how I know how to do that? I used to work for about a year with my father-in-law doing granite. Here we go. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. What am I missing? And to think, today was supposed to be an easy install day. I gotta stop lying to myself. That's what things are supposed to do. You guys having fun? I'm having a lot of fun. Let's tighten it. Make any last minute adjustments. So I'll need to be able to pull that thing out of there and make my adjustments. So a little duct tape will go you a long way. That's damn perfect. I mean, look at that. Let's go. I will take that W. The issue that I ran into is plugging in the sear box into the smoker, the Traeger. The only issue is I couldn't just get an extension cord because it's a special kind of cable connection. So I didn't want to tinker with the wires and cutting and extending. So we decided to cut a little channel right here with the reciprocating saw. And then now the cable can just like run right there. Now that I got my countertops where I want them to be, I'm not going to put a bunch of adhesive there. I'm just going to put maybe a quarter size dot on each corner. That way nobody can bump into them and push them off. And later on, somebody can cut them with a knife and then take them off if they need to. So there's a hot and cold line. I don't need both of them. I only need one line. There's not gonna be any water going to this next one. And then therefore, on the next house, if I do wanna plumb my backyard for water, I can have hot and cold. But for now, I just need water, water. All right guys, so the build out for the outdoor grill station is done. And like promised, I'm gonna tell you why this Traeger Timberline XL, what makes it feel like you have a sports car in your backyard for a grill? Let me show you. All right, number one, after building cabinets, a lot of cabinets, I appreciate the attention to detail. Soft closed cabinets, come on, details. Speaking of details, the inside of the box, when you take the box apart, the inside of it is, it's a kid's playground that you build a, a playhouse. That's wild, the details. Again, the details that I love, that I nerd out about is, they give you actually a real ratchet wrench and a real screwdriver to put this thing together. Beautiful. This is the wildest thing. This is called an easy clean grease and ash keg. All the grease from the grill go in here, as well as the burnt uh, pellets. And these are replaceable little liners. They just throw out and then you, Pop it in here, slide it, perfect. We're done. Close it again. Soft closing hinges, baby. Next up, not only wired temp probes, but also Bluetooth temp probes. Connects to your iPhone, Android, whatever you got. Control it from your phone. You wanna give it an extra smoke. By the way, there's a feature called extra smoke. Give it extra smoke. Do you want a warm up feature? Warm up feature. And here's another cool one. This button right there keeps it warm. 165 degrees freedom height, I believe. <laughs> Fahrenheit. It's freaking cool. Now, look at this. This is a cutting board or a serving board, whatever you want. Magnetized, goes in the back, lift it up together. Your pellets go in there. I mean, come on. Like I said, I built a lot of cabinets before, so I always think about what's convenient. So yes, these are pellets. This is a container that comes with it. Really awesome, I love it. Now, this section right here, multi-use. Again, use it as shelves if you want, or pop this beautiful wood out. Throw this tote in here. Pull this lever, I'm not gonna do it. But when you pull this lever, all the pellets dump right inside of there and then you can change it to hickory or applewood or whatever you want. So not only does it have a convection style exhaust circulation, yeah, I'm making some wings for the kids. They're looking good. And guess what, nothing's burning. The, the thing's designed to have circulation, so it actually is moving that hot air, but also, not only does it have all these bells and whistles, but you have a timer that you could set your cook time, so there's no more playing with your phone. Then you can click on this menu here and have all these accessories you can pair to. Speaking of accessories, we can pair the Bluetooth temp probes, but also, we have our convection cooktop that comes with this thing. You click the sucker, turn it to where you want it to, one to 10, and yeah, it has a setting called the turbo. You better believe we're gonna use it. That's a perfect opportunity to use it like a reverse sear on a steak. Smoke it on a lower temperature, throw it on here for a minute at a time on a high temp, and beautiful steak. Oh, and lastly, I swear I've never seen this before. Watch this. We have a nightlight that illuminates our cooktop area, which is super big, by the way. But that's so convenient, come on. Oops, I think the wings are ready.
they catch me hollering at the moon. All right, let's talk about the budget breakdown for this outdoor kitchen grill station. The lumber was $135. The wire screws and nails were $74. For all the bags of mortar, that was $45. The stone was $753 for all the extra pieces. The faucet, the sink, and all the necessary plumbing pieces was $329. The cabinet doors and the trim were $196. The mini fridge was $242. And the countertops would have been $800, but we were able to save some money because the friends and family discount from my father-in-law, making this grand total $1,774, making us go over budget by only $274. Hey, thanks so much for sticking around watching yet another one of my videos. If you like videos like this or any other kind of home improvement project, maybe you're a homeowner, make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the notification bell that will be alerted every time a video comes out. Remember, we're not trained professionals. We're just not afraid to try and fail. Courage and sweat, that's our motto here. Make sure you connect with me on my social media. All the links will be in the description below as well as the Patreon hour long videos that we put out that don't make it to these 20, 18 minute clips. Hopefully you guys can find a lot of useful stuff inside of those. And don't forget to check out the merch section in description, which all helps support the channel. Tune out this week, we'll see you guys on the next one. See ya, bye. I was actually thinking about using the aluminum setting, but I've never used it and I don't wanna make a fool of myself. They say if you're gonna overlap seams, you have to do it by a minimum of like three inches. Usually they put like stainless steel cabinets in here, but I don't know how to build a stainless steel cabinet. <laughs>